Hello everyone and welcome back to my flight career series, this time in X-Plane 11. I think I'm going to give a little bit of a pause to the instrument flight rating. I think I'll just do it practically. In other words, I'm just going to do instrument flight landings and thereby demonstrate that I'm capable of them rather than uh, do the Microsoft Flight Sim check ride, though I might go back to it eventually. Uh, it seems to be problematic, we'll say. And at least I did the tutorials and the solo flights and so I did the the basic lessons and hopefully I can just put it to use, we'll see. But uh, for now I'll assume that I can do instrument, uh, instrument landings and we'll see if that's true. Uh, but uh, for this video I'm going to try out a new plane, uh, V-Skylab's Contraventus. This is a solar powered plane, so if we take a look at weight, balance and fuel, there is no fuel. Uh, there's no flight time listed and uh, my payload weight is me, basically. It is an ultralight and it's going to be especially interesting because I'm still technically at Bremerton. Uh, that is, I haven't traveled yet uh, since the flight sim flights. So it's overcast today and we are going to find out whether this is going to be horrible for this plane or not. I have not tried this plane yet and it should be unique. So let's see. Let's see what happens. If you're wondering, so far I have logged uh, 11 flights. Well, not really 11 flights, it's 11 flight sessions. Uh, that can include multiple landings. So 11 flight sessions and a grand total of 15.5 hours. So not that much. Still need to uh, get a lot more flight time in. Okay, um, X life something or another. Uh, the plane seems to be skinning off to the side already. Um, I definitely don't need an FMC here. Uh, I don't know what's turning the plane. Uh, looks like I can sort of stop it though, so that's good. Well, that is going to be tough to manage. <laughs> Let's face it. Look at this wing. I mean, uh, body-wise, it's tiny compared to... I guess that's a Baron, maybe? Uh, but the wing... Uh, you can see the solar panels are only on the center portion of the wing and not on the outer edges. Control surfaces, they're all center as well. And they've got holes in. I suppose that's probably for the best. Nothing on the outboard. That's all just to give lift, apparently. I get the feeling we're not going to be going very fast with this. But is there an instrument to indicate the charge? Because we are on electricity. Mm. Battery on. Well, that's good. I told it to start with the engine on. Okay, I think... Uh, well, that's a fuel gauge, and it says full. So, okay, yes, throttling up. Um, maybe I should take it from the outside because this is interesting to maneuver. Oh, I'm going to hit that Cessna. I don't think they're collidable, though. Oh, actually, my wing passes right over it. Um, I don't want to hit that regional jet. How am I going to turn on to the runway without hitting that Delta jet? Um, this is actually going pretty fast. I mean, as far as taxiing is concerned. And I can't make that turn. Oh, well, well. Oh, I'm doing a skiddy thing. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't go through it. Don't go through it. Ah. Okay. Well... I guess it's not a huge surprise that this is going to be tough to taxi. Hmm. It's got these four tiny wheels down there. If it's not obvious already, this is a concept craft. It's not... I mean, there there is a similar solar-powered craft, I think. But this is not that. Maybe I should just take off from here like from the field instead of trying to get to the runway but I think I can make it to the runway now oh 
Oh my god, I'm already flying. Uh, okay. I, I'm not even at uh, full power. I'm like less than half power right now. I'm already flying. Okay. Well, let's get on with it then. This has a uh, maximum airspeed of... Well, it looks like 55 really is already in the red zone. Ooh. I wonder how far it can really fly. I doubt a plane like this has elevator trim. Ooh, look, the battery's already going down. I better gain some height. This is sort of like a glider. Where you just gain height and then shut off the engine and let it let it go. Well, I guess we can see how well it glides. Can't be too heavy. Going at 20 knots only. Wherever you fly this, you had better have good scenery. Because you're not getting very far. I think actually the propeller windmilling actually recharges the battery on this. That's one of its features. Which is a pretty nifty feature when you think about it. It's sort of like regenerative braking on, on hybrids. And it's just gliding along. I can't see Seattle or anything. But again, I'm pretty sure it's to the east. There is something insanely elegant about this sort of thing, as with all gliders. And our battery is full up again, so let me throttle up. So maybe this thing has more range than I gave it credit for. I mean, it's a cloudy day after all. It'd be really tedious to make a long trip with it, but perhaps not impossible. Well, my throttle is all the way up, but here it says on the percent RPM percent, it's only 80 some, about 87. Gotta say, the dynamics seem a little bit too smooth. At these speeds I would expect to be knocked about quite a little bit more. Okay, I think the charge is down to half, so I'm gonna shut down. And it is recharging. It's probably not just from the windmilling. Even on a cloudy day, you get plenty of uh, solar input. Obviously, it's not dark out. Something that people often uh, seem to misunderstand is even if there are clouds, it doesn't mean it's it's dark so you are getting some solar uh, quite a lot of solar input and you are recharging your batteries and we're not losing much height between charge cycles I'm getting back up to nearly full here yeah <laughs> they've got a little call out for 1000 feet that's not really necessary I can see why we need an air brake though. You can see the air brake off to the side here. Well, considering how hard it is to get this thing down, how it wants to stay flying, that's probably a good thing to have. Now I don't know how accurately this is modeling the recharge rate for the battery or whether the weather actually affects it or not. Can't really say, but considering I haven't really broken 30 knots during this flight, I'm going to not call this OP. <laughs> I'm not going to say that this is overpowered, um, even though let's. Uh, I do wonder what kind of batteries they decided to put on here. They can't be very big. I mean, it's because it's just not very big. So the website says that uh, it is initially based on the MIT Daedalus 88 which is human powered so that's not the same thing at all but okay 
Okay, so I've got details on the electrical and power systems. It says it's a single 10 horsepower electric brushless motor. I don't know what uh, brushless means. And it's operated by drawing current from a 300 amp hour battery. Three hundred amp hour does not sound to be particularly powerful or heavy. Maximum RPM of the system is six hundred fifty RPM, um, and it does say that at sea level and full throttle, you only get eighty percent of the RPM, and you actually have to get up to a certain height before you get the full 100%. And yes, the electric motor is connected to a generator and acts as a three-blade wind-powered charger for the battery. It says, oh, this is actually a GPS. Oh, okay, it's a fold-up GPS system. Well, that's going to make navigating a whole lot easier. There's a fold-up GPS system. Let's see, up and down. All right, so there's no manual as a PDF form in the zip file, but you can go online to see all the details like this. Ground speed's only 22 though, even though airspeed seems to be 40 something. And that means we're headed into the wind, aren't we? But it seems like it's only indicating a five knot wind there. But that doesn't account for the gap between our ground speed and airspeed, does it? Hmm. Well, that's curious. Judging from the manual, they expect you to get to 10,000 feet, and that's where the main operations occur between 8 and 10,000 feet. But I'm keeping it low because, first of all, it's going to take a long time to descend from 10,000 feet. And second of all, we we're sightseeing basically. We're it's better to get a good look around. One nice thing about ultralights like this is that you get a good view of the surface and you can uh take a close look at things. Oh, uh we seem to have hit a little bit of a downdraft here. We just got oh, uh oh. Uh, we are now in the middle of a cloud. That's not a problem, technically. Mm, maybe it'd be safer to descend, which means, uh, time to use the air brake. Wow, that really slows us down, all right. Okay, there we go. Looks like the cloud level's at 1,500 or so. So, that's what the air brakes are like. Still not seeing the buildings. I mean, we've got buildings over here, just not across the water at Seattle. Well, nice vantage point. There's Seattle International, and there's Boeing Field over there, that uh, gray splotch right there. Oh, there's, there's downtown Seattle. I see it now. You can see the buildings. Pretty far north from both SeaTac uh, and Boeing Field. I think I'm just gonna land at Boeing Field with this. That'll be most convenient since I want to sort of fly over. I don't know, I saw the buildings before, but now they've sort of disappeared. Seattle has the shyest buildings in the world here. Yeah, there's something about the fog around around Seattle that uh, makes the buildings want to fade out. But there they are. That's downtown Seattle right there. But if you zoom out, they disappear. Look. They, or they're just sort of a, a hazy version of themselves. Hmm. I saw a plug-in on the forum that's supposed to sort of limit the view distance based on a target frame rate so it'll, it won't load obviously I'm loading quite a lot of scenery objects right now you can see the buildings all the way out to the horizon there and uh, there's the cars on the highways and everything there's cars 
cars here, there, and everywhere. Maybe some ships, I'm not sure. But yeah, lots of objects are being loaded, and it would try and limit that depending on what kind of frame rates you were getting. Of course, with a plane like this, uh, given the fact that we're traveling at a fairly low speed, unlikely that we need to worry too much about the frame rates. But with a faster plane, definitely would be much more necessary. So I'll, I'll try that plugin out and tell you how that works. But right now I'm uh, sort of aiming to line up for Boeing Field right now. We'll uh, try and make our way to downtown, but it's taking quite a while. This indicator off the side here shows negative. And then now I'm throttling up, and then it goes positive. So apparently when that goes negative, that means it's recharging. And when it goes positive, it's, uh, it's losing power. But can I get it to where it's exactly balanced? It seems to just flick from one to the other and not anywhere in the middle. Well, now it's recharging. Let me just throttle up a tiny bit. Oh, that was just a tiny bit, but it went all the way to 60%. Oh, it doesn't seem to be going to the plus side where it's draining. I wonder why the plus side is green and the minus side is red when actually I, I sort of like the minus side better. That should be green. Red sort of implies that things are getting depleted when in this case that's opposite. I don't know I get the feeling this is really too easy in a way. It's slow. There's that. It's really easy to handle, though, I, again, I'm not in a very stiff wind or anything. Okay, there is depleting. Oh, now it is recharging. So I guess that means we can keep it at 60% RPM indefinitely. I need to try this at night at some point. And see how that works out. Also, uh, we'll... I don't know how the flood light works. Well, we can't even see anything in daylight, but I wonder if it drains more electric charge if you've got the flood light on, or whether it does when you've got other lights on. Interesting piece of information we need to examine. Where There's the Space Needle. Shorter than I thought it would be. The Port of Seattle. Okay, well, we should probably head towards Boeing Field now. We're pretty low. Obviously, this plane is not suited to IFR at all. So that wasn't an option anyway. Okay, so this will be my first flight in a solar-powered aircraft. An aircraft with... Uh, with no fuel for its engine on board. Of course... There are gliders that I've flown, but... But if those have an engine, they do have fuel with them. I guess I should go for that small runway instead of the long one, huh? Of course, this bar directly in front of me is sort of annoying. I think... I can actually sidestep it like that. I can shift my view. Well, clearly... My altimeter was not properly configured, because if that's 500, we've got the wrong numbers there. Does it even have a knob to uh, to get the pressure right? I mean, well, it must do, but these aren't knobs. How do I even change the air pressure for the altimeter? Well, I see one red and one white, so... Presumably, I'm on track for that runway. I think there's only a one-knot wind against us, so not the worst landing I could have in this. And it's been an easy flight. Oh, I'm a little bit low, it says. I don't know, I'm only going at 10 knots right now. One hundred. 
I'm wondering how this thing is staying up at all. But it's just descending. I don't know if it has really a stall speed per se. 50. Okay. Oh, there we go. Brakes and air brakes. Seem to be leaning to one side, which would be appropriate. Oh, 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 what, 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 what? Why? Why? Don't do anything bad. Oh, why have you decided to go this way? There's a DC-8 there. Um, okay. It doesn't like going very slow. Well, now I'm on the main runway, which probably is not a good idea. But I can't throttle up very fast, otherwise it'll take off again. I'm not 100% sure I can completely stop this plane. Maybe the grass will help, actually. Maybe this is the best thing, to just keep it on the grass. Ooh, but its wing is poking into the runway area. A little bit further? Okay, alright, alright, we'll leave it there. So there you have it, the V-Sky Labs Contraventus. And, uh, well, it's interesting for very specific purposes. Might be good for sightseeing. Well, definitely good for sightseeing. And it's just an interesting aircraft all around. So, I'm amused by it. But anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.